chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1. Verse 1, Peter introduces his epistle and addresses his audience and acknowledges uh, himself as the author. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Uh, this morning I want us to uh, look at this concept of being strangers scattered about. Peter here was addressing individuals who were strangers in these areas of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia. That means uh, that that was not necessarily their home, was it? Uh, they had scattered, uh, been scattered to these areas uh, due in part, perhaps majority part, of persecution that was going on in the first century, Christians were having to move about uh, from place to place. And uh, as individuals had uh, left Jerusalem in the very be beginning of the gospel age, when the gospel was preached and the church established, uh, the Bible speaks of those individuals leaving Jerusalem and going back to their homes. Uh, but many of them uh, were sojourners. They were pilgrims. And the Bible oftentimes refers to individuals uh, in the first century as pilgrims or sojourners in a land. These individuals uh, were citizens of a holy nation. They had uh, obeyed the gospel and become Christians. In uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning in uh, verse 9, well, look at verse 5 uh, to begin with. 1 Peter 2, verse 5, Peter addresses these individuals. He says, Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. And then look at verses 9 and verse 10. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. So these individuals were uh, citizens of a holy nation. They were Christians. They were members of the kingdom of God because they had obeyed the gospel and been added to the church, the kingdom. Acts chapter 2, verse 47. But here on this earth, though they were citizens of a holy nation, citizens of the kingdom, they didn't have a home. They were scattered about. Scattered about. They were movers. They were sojourners. They were pilgrims in this land. And the Bible very much uh, talks about this aspect of Christians in particular, that they are individuals who are here in this world, but this world's not our home, is it? We are uh, a citizen of the kingdom of God once we obey the gospel. And we're here only for a short time. We're sojourners. We're pilgrims in this land. In John chapter 17, Jesus uh, addressed this issue with his disciples. John chapter 17, beginning of verse uh, 14, he says, I have given them, and here in the them is speaking to his disciples who would become his apostles. He says, I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. So here Jesus refers to himself as a sojourner, a pilgrim. We are in the world, but we're not of the world. And when I taught these disciples who would be my apostles, they now are the same. The citizens of the world... That is, individuals who uh, despised the teaching of Jesus and did not want to listen to Jesus or obey Jesus, they did not come out of the world. 
and join with Jesus, right? And so once the gospel was preached and the individuals were added to the church or the kingdom, uh, there in 1 Peter chapter 2, the Bible says that these individuals were a holy nation, verse 9, because they had been called out of darkness, that is a life of sin, or out of the world, you might say, and into his glorious light, that's into the church, into the truth. And so Jesus here before the church even established in John 17 says, these individuals are with me. They're sojourners in this world. They're not part of the wickedness of the world. They're separated from that. This is only a, a temporary thing. And he says, uh, verse 15, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world because they were needed. Jesus had said that the, look at the world, and he referred to it as a field, white to harvest, and that there was a need for, for those to go and to reap the benefits or reap that harvest. These disciples who would be Jesus' uh, apostles were needed to reap that uh, harvest, to, to turn these individuals from the, light, from the darkness into light. And so he says, I don't want you to take them out of the world right now. Right? They're needed in the world. The light is needed in the world. And he says, but uh, that thou shouldest keep them from the evil, the consequences of the evil. Right? Help them to be protected in this world. And of course, they would be protected by God's word. Uh, they would be protected in that Jesus would send his comforter, the Holy Spirit, to guide them into all truth. In verse 16, it says, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Once again, they lived here, but this was not their home. They were sojourners. They were pilgrims. They were strangers. The world saw them as strangers. These men teach the doctrine of Christ. They're not of us, the world said. And Jesus said, the world will hate you because of that. Then verse 17, Jesus said, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Keep them pure, keep them clean, keep them not of the world, right, through thy word. Verse 20, Jesus says, neither pray I for these alone, these disciples who would be his apostles. He says, but I also pray for them that believe on me through their word. In other words, through in perpetuity. That includes us. Jesus prayed for them that they were not of the world, but they were in the world to do a, a job. They had a mission, right? To turn people from the darkness and have them translated into the light. And that same mission is given to us. We are sojourners and pilgrims, strangers in this world, and the world will hate us because we are separate from the world. In Hebrews chapter 11, <clears throat> We are strangers or pilgrims in the world in the same sense as Abraham was a sojourner and a pilgrim. The Hebrews writer in Hebrews chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11, uh, many times referred to as the Faith Hall of Fame, and, and Brother Kevin went through a great study of Hebrews chapter 11, not too long ago. When we look at verse 13, the Bible says, These all died in faith. They knew the truth, they obeyed it, and they, were, uh, they remained obedient to it. But notice, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that see, say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is a heavenly country, a spiritual country, a spiritual home. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. And so uh, just as Abraham was a sojourner, and those uh, individuals of the Faith Hall of Fame were sojourners in the land, so are we. In Hebrews chapter 13, Hebrews chapter 13,
Notice verse 12, it says, Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. For here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. This is not our home. <laughs> right? Jesus was, uh, in essence, sent without the gate of the city in Jewish in uh, Old Testament times. That's what they would do with trash. That's what they would do with individuals who had been guilty of a crime. That's what they would do with individuals who had a disease like leprosy. They would send them outside of the city to kind of quarantine the, the folks inside the city to make sure that Whatever that was, it wouldn't affect the whole city. They sent Jesus outside of the city as if he were a criminal, as if he were trash. And of course, they, uh, this is symbolic. This is figuratively speaking. Ultimately, Jesus did walk out of that city bearing his own cross up the hill of Calvary so that we might be able to have hope in his name. But notice the Hebrews writer says, let us also go out of the gate. Right? This isn't our home. Physically, this might be our city, but we don't belong here. Right? We follow Jesus. And if He's outside the gate, we're going with Him. And we will bear His reproach because we'd, we'd rather be anywhere with Jesus than anywhere without Jesus. Here we have no continuing city. This is just a temporary home, isn't it? We are only strangers or sojourners or pilgrims in this land. We seek a city to come, right? We seek a city to come. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19... Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. I'll get there eventually. There we go. Paul, writing to the church at Ephesus, speaks of our citizenship. He says, Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. Paul here telling the church at Ephesus, yes, we live here on this earth, we have physical abodes here on this earth, but our true citizenship is when we obey the gospel, is when we become united with Christ, when we become a part of the family of God. Saints, those who have obeyed the gospel. Notice Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verse 26, Paul writes, For you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. This is how we place our citizenship in the body of Christ. By hearing the gospel, believing it, which culminates in water baptism, we're baptized into the body of Christ. We're added by God to that body, Acts chapter 2, verse 47. 
We are then heavenly citizens. We are citizens of a heavenly kingdom, a heavenly city, a spiritual city. And we are all equal in that city from a spiritual standpoint. And notice verse 29. If you then be Christ's, then are you Abraham's seed, just like he was a sojourner in the land and a pilgrim in the land, and heirs according to the promise. Heirs. The gospel which makes us a member of that heavenly city, the church, and by heavenly I mean ordained of God, that place in which we can have our citizenship if we obey the gospel, obeying the gospel that makes us a member of that church, a member of that kingdom, a citizen in God's kingdom also makes us a part of his family. And as part of his family, we are heirs to the true heavenly city that we're looking for, right? Heaven. In John chapter 14, Jesus said in verse 1, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. As members of the heavenly city of the kingdom of God, the church here on this earth, as we live and sojourn and wander through this world, because this isn't our home, we're just waiting until the end, right? We're wandering in this world, doing uh, what God would have us to do, being faithful to him, looking for that heavenly city. Jesus said, I've prepared your home. It's beyond this life. He says, in my father's house are many mansions, and if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. There is a place prepared, a home prepared for those who will be obedient. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there ye may also be. When Jesus returns, if we've been faithful to him, if we've been obedient to him, then we will go on to our eternal abode. We will go on to our true home. But here in this life, we are sojourners, we're strangers, we're pilgrims, like those disciples that would be Jesus' apostles, like Abraham, like those Jews that were saved from Egyptian bondage, Moses being called by God to lead them out of Egyptian bondage and across the Red Sea. And they wandered for 40 years in the wilderness, didn't they? They would uh, set up tent and the tabernacle wherever God would tell them to, and then they would take it down and they would wander some more. For 40 years they wandered. They didn't have a home, but they were citizens. They were citizens of the nation of Israel, God's chosen people. But God wanted them to know this is not your home. And they wandered and they took down and they pulled up and they put down and they pulled up for 40 years until because of their disobedience originally those individuals who were of age had passed on and that younger generation had raised up. God allowed Joshua to take into the promised land of Canaan. But for 40 years they we're looking forward to that home in Canaan, right? That was their home. That place of rest that God promised. A, a place that flowed with milk and honey. While they wandered in the wilderness, they were not at home. They were looking forward to a home. And today, that's what we're doing. We're wandering as citizens of the church, as citizens of God's people. We're wandering here on this earth, but we're looking forward to that heavenly, that place of rest. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. Paul writes, For our conversation or our behavior or our citizenship is in heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ who shall change our vile body that it might be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. 
Christians, those who have heard the gospel and obeyed it, are added to a spiritual kingdom. And in, as such, they are citizens of a spiritual body. Wandering, sojourning, pilgriming in this land, but looking forward to the heavenly home that Jesus has prepared for us. As pilgrims here in this world, we recognize that we've pitched our tent, but it's only a temporary place. And we have obligations while we are wandering in the wilderness, right? Just as those who wandered in the wilderness uh, had obligations to worship God in spirit and in truth, uh, we too must worship God. As they were to obey the law, we too must obey the law. Returning back to 1 Peter where we started, First Peter chapter 1, verse 17. The Bible says, If you call on the Father who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. Fear defined as reverence. Fear defined as recognizing the awesome power of God and recognizing that if we'll be obedient to it, we can be saved and recognizing that, uh, that we should fear and sense of scared of the consequences of not obeying. But notice, we have a work. Every man has a work. While we're sojourning here, we need to work in fear. We need to work with obedience. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11, Peter says, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. Don't connect yourself to things of this world, this physical world. Don't seek to enjoy the, the lust of this life. Right? We need to continue to focus on the heavenly the spiritual, looking ahead to being with God in heaven, not trying to anchor ourselves to the lust of this world, to the physical things of this world. In 1 Peter 2, verse 12, Peter says, having your conversation or behavior honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may, be, they may by your good works which they shall behold glorify God in the day of visitation. Our conduct should be honorable. We should be honest with ourselves, with our fellow Christians, and with fellow man. And we should be filled with good works, doing the things that God would have us to do, defining good as what God proves to be good. Doing the works that God would have us to do. In verse 13 through verse 17 of 1 Peter chapter 2, Peter then says, Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be the king as supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with well-doing he may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God, Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. As long as our laws here in this world, in this land in which we are sojourning, do not contradict any God-given law, we are to be obedient to the law. God wants us to be uh, good citizens here while we're sojourning, doesn't he? He wants us to be law-abiding citizens. And in so doing, we are keeping a good report or showing uh, that we are good and honest people, that we can be trusted. And once again, we want to honor the law as long as it honors God. Remember Acts chapter 5, verse 29, when any law contradicts the law of God, 
when any man tells us to stop speaking in the name of Jesus, Peter and those other disciples said we ought to obey God rather than men. We ought to obey God rather than men. But as long as the laws of this land in which we sojourn and pilgrim are not contradicting any law of God, we need to be obeying the law. That's what a citizen of the kingdom of God would do. We want to be uh, good sojourners. We want to be welcomed sojourners and pilgrims. In James chapter 2, James chapter 2, James tells us it's, it's impossible to be faithful to God without doing what God tells us to do. Peter said, as pilgrims, as sojourners in this land, we have obligations. We are to conduct our pilgrimage with reverence to God, listening to Him, doing what He says to do, abstaining from worldly lust, being honest and filled with good works, obeying the laws of the land as they do not contradict God. And James tells us in James chapter 2, verse 14, What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? Verse 17, Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. There are a lot of folks today in the religious world who are religious-minded who teach that there's not one thing that a person can do that will make him closer a child of God. And how many times have we read already, just this morning, as sojourners and pilgrims, how we're to work, how we're to do the will of God, and how those works are to be good works, not just any works, not works that some man devises, not some works that some committee devises, the works of God. We're to obey God's will, God's word. And if our faith is not enough to do what God says to do, it's a dead faith. It's worthless. It's worthless. What good does it do to believe in Jesus and do not the things which he says? Right? That's what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 20. Why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? James chapter 2, verse 24, you see then how that by works, and this works is works of obedience, not man-made works, but works of obedience, like faith, like repenting of your past sins, like confessing that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, like being baptized in water in order to have your past sins washed away. Those are good works. They're godly works. They're things God commands. You see then how that work by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Go back up to verse 18. James said, A man might say he has faith. A man might say he has faith. But then he says what? Show me thy faith without thy works. You can't do it. <laughs> you can't show your faith without... How does God know you believe in him? Many will say unto me in that day, Jesus said. Are those the individuals that Jesus says he will save? Those who say? No, not those who say. But those who do, right? Those who do. And so we need to be reverential soldier, uh, sojourners, pilgrims in this land. We need to be obedient sojourners in this land. We, mean, we need to be doing the works of God, obeying God as we're here in this land. Not of the world, but sojourners in the world. 
spreading the gospel of Christ, being faithful to God and trying to increase his kingdom. In that sense, we are heavenly pilgrims, aren't we? We're looking for a home. We know where it is. God's prepared a place for us. We have obligations to, to meet. And when Jesus returns, the Bible says he will take those faithful home with him back to heaven. And that's why we're here, to be faithful to God. And that's why we teach the truth as God would have us to teach it. And any individual that wants to be a citizen of that kingdom can obey the gospel. Believe it, repent of their past sins, confess that Jesus is the Christ, and be immersed in water to have their past sins washed away. God will add you to his church just like he's added everybody since Acts chapter 2 to the church. And then your job has just begun to sojourn in this land as a Christian, as a faithful member of the church, looking for that heavenly city when Jesus returns. If anybody needs to obey the gospel, the invitation is extended. If you've already obeyed those initial acts but have fallen away and need uh, anything from us, we're here to assist you if we can as we stand and sing.